Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. Hola, I'm in Spain. Hope you're all doing very, very well. Thanks everyone who's listened to the podcast, episode two. It's out now, give it a listen. I'll drop the links in the video description. I loved the conversation about people leaving early and overrated transfer of the summer, but we're, talk- we're here to talk about transfers. And a little bit, it's a little bit like being on holiday, isn't it? You know, when you go and get your all, you can eat food and you get yourself a plate of chips and a bit of paella. And then you look across the table and someone's got some fajitas and then someone else has got a burger and then someone else has got lasagna and you want a little bit of that. Um, that's a little bit like Todd Bowley, isn't it? He sees what other people have got and he wants it and he's gone and got it with labia, not lasagna, la- labia and Elise um, of Crystal Palace. Absolutely incredible what uh, Chelsea are doing. And I think also, if we're being honest, absolutely concerning what Liverpool are doing in the transfer window. I'd be really concerned if I was a Liverpool fan at the moment because you are just, you know, what's the plan going to be? You spent all summer going for Lavia and effectively um, he has decided to go to Chelsea and I think it's the flip side of Casido. I think with Chelsea and Casido, they obviously made it very, Casido very aware that they really, 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 really wanted him. And then what happened is, obviously, Liverpool came in and they did get him. I think with Southampton, there's always been that uh, feeling with Liverpool and Lavia that they didn't feel he was worth it. And uh, ultimately, I think that's why Lavia has chosen Chelsea, because I think Liverpool have acted like Lavia, and maybe he was, a second choice um, or maybe third choice midfielder. Bids meant to have gone in for 37, 45, and then suddenly Chelsea come in and they want to bid, Liverpool want to bid 55, 60. And I think it's just it's bit them on bit them on the backside because Lavia feels that well Chelsea want me whereas you know you bid for Casido etc. So I mean ultimately Liverpool have been good at transfers for a very long time. I'm not going to deny, but I just think that Chelsea are better at, at, at the moment and where they're getting the money from. We've spoken before. That's just bitterness and jealousy. Any other club could do what Chelsea are doing. Liverpool could do it. Manchester United could do it. Chelsea are doing it. So I'm not here to rain on that Chelsea brigade, um, parade, um, ultimately it's, it's incredible what they're doing and um, I think it puts that expectation onto Pochettino that he does have to go and um, get the uh, top four done now with no Europe and the players that they're bringing in. still think they need a bit of a striker but yeah, love you to Chelsea, I know it's not official yet but uh, in the, those people in the know say it's basically done, a little bit like Casido. If you think back to Friday morning, everyone thought it was Liverpool. Friday lunchtime, it was going to be Chelsea. It took two or three days for it to be official because Chelsea had to, you know, work out how to actually finance the deal. And then, obviously, they'll get it done. So, Lavia to Chelsea, expect that to happen. And then you've got a very exciting midfield that should be Chelsea's midfield for many years to come. Enzo Fernandez is still really young. Casido is still really young. Lavia's even y- younger. Um, it's exciting times for Chelsea, but it's curious and crisis times for Liverpool, who I think have really not done the sort of business that they would have hoped to have done. And I think that, I mean, where are they going to go? I still think Gravenberg at Bayern Munich, you could, the thing is, sometimes in life, you walk into a disco, you see the love of your life, they bin you off, you're disappointed, you get a couple of more drinks down your neck, you see another one and you go, they're quite good, they bin you off. And then you're like, oh. Then you see a third one and you think, oh, this is it. They bin you off. In life, you might find four or five. Um, so look, Liverpool are down. They're not out. They've got to work really hard in the next two weeks. The thing is, they've lost Milner, Henderson, Cater, Fabinho. Off the top of my head, I think Thiago's going. They've literally got no holding midfielders. And even if you're going to play Curtis Jones or Alexi McAllister there, they're not good enough to do that role really and if they get injured what do you do so Liverpool have got to be active in this transfer window which I'm sure they will be uh, but Lavia to Chelsea Elise from Palace Chelsea again apparently beat, beating Man City to that what are people's thoughts on this get in the comments Chelsea's transfer strategy why do you think they keep winning for me I think they keep winning because they're, they're persuasive I mean whether that's financially persuasive wages persuasive they're just very, very persuasive and it works really well. Uh, sorry, I'm walking around the streets here. It's bloody hot, but um, there's a few buses here, um, but uh, should still be able to hear me. And uh, yeah, I think with, uh, with regards to Chelsea, get your comments in below. Get in the comments as well. If you're, Even if you're not a Liverpool fan, who should they be going for? 
I mean, I know Amrabat is a player that United have been waiting for for a very long time. Maybe that's something that Liverpool will uh, look at uh, uh, being interested in. But um, I think with... Uh, with um, Look, I, I like the look of Gravenberg. Maybe Goretzka, someone like that. But uh, Ch they've got to get something. It's not like Liverpool can just stubbornly go, we're not going to buy anybody. They've got to do something, haven't they? I um, also want to just have a quick word on about Yuri and Timber and Arsenal. I mean, look, I don't think anybody really... Uh, gets um gets like this yeah sorry about that everybody got no idea what went wrong there i think the, i think the camera got too hot hotter than the sun rosmus hoyland time but uh, i was just mentioned but i was just going to mention timber actually really disappointing what's happened with timber apparently it's a season in, uh, ending injury or pretty much most of the season and look you know i don't want arsenal to win the league as a united fan i don't think anybody does apart from arsenal fans but you know he's, a, he's an exciting young player coming into the premier league and I, you know, same with Tyrone Mings, same with any player. You don't wish those sort of injuries on anybody. So all the best to him. And it's a loss to the Premier League without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, he's so frustrating as well when you sign a player. The same thing happened to Villa last year, didn't it? With the centre-back they bought. Was it Carlos? You buy these players and then they get injured right at the start of the season. It's so frustrating. But uh, yeah, you, you, I think you can... I, I mean, look, get in the comments. But surely, is that something that people get excited about when opposition players get injured for most of the season? I I've never seen the joy in that. I mean, it's the same with Kevin De Bruyne as well, out for two or three months. I don't see what the point in that is either. But uh, um, Also, just check out the podcast. The link's in the descriptions. Uh, episode two is up. Unbelievable support for this. I mean, you asked for it. We've done it. Uh, so please listen to it each week and download it. Some really good sections in there this week. Really would like to know. I mean, you can comment below here if you want. But uh, people leaving early. Uh, underrated. Uh, trans uh, most underrated player in the, in the Premier League. Most overrated player in the Premier League. Got that in there. Also, we're speaking about some of the weekend stuff. Uh, lots to get involved in there. Thanks, everyone. Links in the video description. Please support the new podcast. It really, really, really helps. And smash a like on this video if you like it. You know, Goldbridge doing... Uh, I don't do uh, mini retirements when I'm on holiday. I do relaxation and uh, little updates like this. So if you like it, smash a like. And like I say, check the podcast down below. Speak to you in a bit.